So I went into Guatemala and got a hotel at the town, I don't remember what it's called, on the edge of a lake, um, um, and met this Israeli kid and went with him to a tourist town that was in an island in the lake, which is a beautiful little town. I didn't stay there though because the hotels were more, but it was a pretty place. And, uh, Hung out with him while he was checking out all these like trinket stores, and then we went into we took a bus into uh, Tikal the next day, which is an amazing place. Um, they have all of these uh, pyramids, one really tall, maybe it's the highest pyramid in all of Latin America. And as we were we did the tour, but as we were hiking up it, there are these huge uh, roots of trees growing out of the actual pyramid, and the roots were like this big. Um, totally overgrown. I think they were like a thousand years old. And uh, this place had energy. I could feel it inside the pyramids. They're in the central part of the pyramids. There are these two really steep pyramids. And one of them you're not allowed to climb because I guess it's dangerous. But the other one, I went inside the room and in that room, very, very powerful. Um, and uh, there's another pyramid we got to climb to the top of. But it was this huge complex. It's big. And um, totally grown over. I guess they found it. I can't remember when they found it. But we were exploring the insides of all the apartments where the people actually lived. And uh, they had some cool animals there too, like uh, anteaters. And I uh, can't remember if they were even monkeys and stuff. Um, but I didn't see the other Mayan places, so I guess I'll have to go back there. I've heard lots of cool stories about them though. Like those English girls were telling me about this mushroom trip they had there when they actually saw little, little like green, blue people all over the place. But uh, anyway, then I took the boat, the boat or the bus to uh, Guatemala City, and then immediately took a bus to uh, the northern end of uh, Lake Atitlan. I decided I was going to live in Lake Atitlan and learn Spanish. So I went to, I think it's Gringo Teca, I guess that's what they call it, because it sounds like that. But it's like in the northern east end of the town, but it's like a town, bigger town. So I took a little boat across the lake to uh, San Pedro, Lake Atlanta, because um, it seemed like a cool, like, smaller place to hang out. And I got a hotel room there, and I took five days of Spanish classes from... Um, Oh man, I can't remember his name. Korean American guy. Um, and kind of got the basics of Spanish. And then he, and I actually kind of, I think, moved in with him and that, because he was going to leave. So then, but he ended up staying with me for another couple of weeks because they didn't let him leave because he didn't have his uh, passport. But then I inherited his house and I lived there for four months in his house. I have a two bedroom house that was just mine, keep totally furnished. Um, and on the roof, I built a gym, um, a sit-up thing, out just out of wood and um, um, a furniture that I bought up there. A uh, sit-up thing, like a curling thing, and I made all my barbells and dumbbells out of um, uh, milk cartons filled with cement. Um, so I had like various friends, like gringo friends, English kids, and American guys. Uh, Glenn was my main, our Canadian main partner who would work out with me. Uh, it was beautiful. I could overlook, overlooking the uh, lake. And every night I go into the uh, place, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, right on the edge of the water where the boat comes in. We'd watch movies every night and they would, they could make really good food too. So there's a whole social scene, lots of, lots of uh, tourists living there for like months or even a year. Um, and the whole town, you could walk from one place to another on a trail, no cars, is an amazing place to live. Um, and I, I also bought weed and I was living there, but I was having trouble breathing uh, because I was on next to some coffee plantations, which helps me me asthma, and I had some lots of trouble breathing. So I eventually quit, and I, so I didn't smoke for like the three months, up, the last three months I was there at all. But uh, when I was, I, I bought a like, bag of weed like this big, and there was this party, like a Halloween party or something, can't remember. But, uh, or maybe it was New Year's, I think it was a New Year's party, up on the top of a hill, 
And I rolled a joint that was about literally probably like a foot long and about that big around. <laughs> I should have gotten a photo of it. I think somebody else took a photo of it. But uh, it was pretty crazy. And uh, I climbed the mountain San Pedro with some guy when I first got there. And then I bought a uh, canoe from somebody. And uh, so I canoed across to an El Mar San Marcos and hung out there. I guess that they had this new age center there, like this little hut they had where they you go inside of it and they do their classes and stuff. And but and then if you go up a little bit higher there, there was actual Indians who were living there, uh, Mayan Indians who dressed up in that special Mayan clothing. And they were really excited to see me. They were, I guess, white people don't walk through there a lot because they were all like, hi, hi. Um, so anyways, I was there four months and I studied English, Spanish on a book that was for actually learning English. But I just spent the whole time learning uh, vocabulary and... Uh, basic grammar and so when I left I could speak Spanish but uh, while I was there I also took a boat um, my canoe from San Pedro down to Santiago which is down south a little bit more and we climbed I think the mountains called Mountain Atalan it's a steaming volcano we got to the top of it and we could actually see steam coming out and it was a beautiful view and I didn't realize Right on the other side of the lake was plains, perfectly flat plains. I thought it, like all of Guatemala was mountains because from uh, from uh, Guatemala City to uh, San Pedro and even even from Belize it was all mountains. But I looked towards I guess the east or the west and it's just perfectly plains. And the plains were actually lower than the lake, and they started right on the other side of the lake. There was a lake and then there was a little hill, and then it went down. So uh, that was surprising. And then I could see the I could see the two volcanoes that were surrounding uh, uh, the other Antigua, which was right next to it, really close. I didn't realize how close Antigua was. Um, and then we hiked down. I was with me, Glenn, and Gregor, a, uh, I guess a Yugoslavian guy or something, a Czech guy, and we hiked down. But then it got dark. It got pitch dark, no moon, and we didn't have flashlights for some reason. Like, we forgot them or the batteries came out or something. And we got to the edge of this this cliff, and we couldn't see the bottom of it. We didn't jump off, so we decided to just stay there. But we were still kind of high up on the mountains, and we only have a short, so we are kind of tired, so we, or cold. So we uh, built a fire and just kept a fire going all night long, sleeping next to it. And then we got up in the morning, and we realized that the, what we were in the edge of was like a 60-foot cliff. So it's a good thing we didn't jump off, <laughs> hoping that we'd fall down. Not very far. And then we climbed up really steeply on the side of the ravine and hiked down. But it was really interesting going down the mountain because then we caught to this like uh, big fields of thorns. I guess the Indians would uh, cut down the trees and then farm and, until the soil got tired and then they'd farm someplace else. And then, and then where they uh, had farmed, it was just regrown by thorns. So it was kind of a pain, but we had machetes that we could cut through. And then got in our boat and paddled the boat back. And then I paddled the boat down another time with, I think, uh, I guess an American kid or a Canadian kid or something, um, to right across from Santiago. And we were uh, walking around these, like, maybe it was a coffee plantation or something, just walking around. And we looked down, and there were all these arrowheads, like mine Indian arrowheads everywhere. So we were just looking at them and picking them up, and I think he collected a bunch of them, and I collected a few. But they were everywhere, and um, so, and I did another few trips on the boat with some people, but uh, so, yeah, amazing place, and uh, they had a market up on the top part there where all the Indians lived, and uh, yeah, I met a whole lot of people there, but I didn't speak any Spanish, just English, but I did study Spanish, so I learned my Spanish there, and um, it would have been cool. I also bought a bike there, a brand new bike for like a hundred bucks, but a really heavy clunker, but it was built really solidly. And uh, But I didn't ride it around the whole lake. I never got around to that. It would have been fun because on the northwest side of the lake, there were these switchbacks that go like 30 of them. But I did take the bus up there and hiked up because there's this huge tree that looks like, uh, I guess, from, from down in the lake, looks like an, the profile of an old man. And then we hiked down, my friend Stasia. Um, 
Oh yeah, and, and, and I also had to leave there at one point to go to another Mayan ruin because you can only stay in that country for three months. For, um, the ruin was Copal. Uh, I guess I'll uh, include that in the next video. Hmm.